Hello and welcome to my PC CRT calibration guide. What you will have by the end of this tutorial, you will have four times or more deeper blacks with no near black crush, significantly better colour saturation, perfect gamma, eliminated DAC related colour issues, uh, brought the CRT significantly closer to today's colour reproduction standards, all within less than an hour. The benefits of a 3D look transform CRTs almost into a new display technology. You don't need to rely on the data internals for colour reproduction. CRTs are capable of much more. What I meant by significantly better colour saturation is, as you can see here, um, this here is the gamut of a Trinitron PC CRT. As you can see, uh, the green saturation is clearly way off. Um, there's poor colour saturation everywhere on yellow as well. Um, this is inevitable for uh, lutless PC CRTs. Uh, this will hurt your contrast as well because uh, your colour saturation, especially on green, is going to be way off. Um, post LUT, if you use LUTs to calibrate, uh, your colour saturation tracking uh, will be better than a BVM CRT thanks to modern advancements in display calibration technology. Your colours will be better than a BVM CRT. Here's a gamut of a BVM CRT. You can see how uh, the colours aren't nearly as uh, saturated as uh, accurately as my PC CRT with a 3D LUT. So 3D LUTs are going to correct um, the issue PC CRTs have with gamuts and make the colours of your monitor uh, better than uh, BVM colours. And we're going to improve many of the things with a 3D LUT. Just a quick moment for people who have uh, Trinitron CRTs. Uh, follow the guide in the description, it's a Windows guide, uh, with the following notes in hand. Um, so there's going to be this video in the description. I want you to watch this video. I want you to follow this video uh, and get uh, your PC Trinitron CRT Windows. Um, Firstly, don't connect the 5 volt TTL. This will raise blacks and it is not necessary. Measure with a 10% window with a black background. Use a tripod about 3 inches away if you cannot. Take the flick cover off the colorimeter since it contains magnets which will magnetize the display and you don't want that. And uh, the most important point, patch your windass. No need for a virtual machine. Uh, refer to link in description, so in the description I'm going to link a quick win, uh, Windows patch guide. Um, when you patch your Windows 10, uh, Windows is going to be much more stable and you will not need to use a virtual machine. Okay, uh, now on to the calibration. Step 1, preparing the CRT for display cal. In this step, we configure the CRT to make the most out of a 3D LUT. Part 1, open HCFR. Go into Generator and set 10% window with a black background. Go into Advanced Settings and use My Settings. So we're going to open HCFR. Uh, click the file. Next. Make sure your colorimeter is selected. Finish. Um, display Type. Uh, make sure you select CRT. Reading Type Display. Make sure your Observer Type is CIE 1932-2-DEG. Your integration time is at best, and uh, click uh, calibrate meter, and hopefully your meter is uh, calibrated to the refresh rate of the CRT after you've clicked this. Then click OK. Go to generator here. Uh, make sure image area is at 10%. This is unche unchecked. You don't have image background checked, um, and display triplets should also be unticked. Click OK. Go to advanced preferences. References, make sure this is in Rec 709. Do not change your white point unless you want to do uh, 9300K. Um, go to make sure display gamma is set to power law and this is set to 2.2. Then click OK and that's our HCFR setup done. Okay, for part two of the guide, we're going to measure 100% white and target 100 nits. We're going to get Delta E as low as we can using our RGB gain settings in the CRT's OSD. So when you go to HCFR, click 100, then click the play button, and then your CRT is going to start measuring white. Um, 
hopefully you have HDFR on your second display so you can see how white is being measured live and um, I've already measured as you can see my red is really high my green is quite low and my blue is very low this here is delta E the lower delta E is the more uh, accurate your white point is the more on target you are this here is your luminance output right now it's at 4 I want you to target 100 nits I want your luminance output to be 100 don't go any higher if you go any higher than 100 you're going to have uh, significantly worse backs it's not worth uh, trying to aim for um, go for 80 if you want better blacks 80 uh, nits output is perfectly enough but um, for the best uh, color volume go for 100 so if I were calibrating this I'll go into the CRT's OSD I'd find RGB gain and uh, I'll raise blue I would raise green and I would lower red. It's a bit of a juggle, you know, you raise blue, red lowers, um, you raise green, red and blue lowers. Green um, weighs heavily on the luminance output. Um, so if you touch green, then your luminance output is going to change uh, dramatically. So uh, keep that in mind when you're calibrating. Okay, for step three, now measure 30% white and adjust your bias settings if you have those to get delta as low as you can. If you don't have bias settings, don't worry about doing this. So I want you to go into HDFR, click 30, then click play, and your colorimeter is going to start measuring 30% white, and I want you to do what you did in the previous step, but uh, forget about the luminance target. All I want you to do is make sure that red, green, and blue are as balanced as you can get them using your bias settings. Okay, for part four, we're going to go to view, near black scale, we're going to lower brightness in the USD until patch two can be just about be measured. If you cannot lower brightness, lower G2 or your biases if you have those. So we're going to go to view, near black scale, when you select two and then click play. And now your color rim, so it's going to be measuring um, patch two in a uh, near black scale. I want you to lower brightness on the OSD of your CRT until it's reporting as zero nits. So it's just so it says uh, it's reporting as black. And then I want you to keep on raising um, OSD brightness until it reports as uh, 0.003 nits if you're using a color, uh, color monkey. Um, if not, then just keep raising it until it it's just about being read by the colorimeter. If you lowered OSD brightness by one, just a little bit, it would start be reading as black. So I want you to lower OSD brightness until patch two can just about be read. Okay, uh, part six of the guide. Go back to 100% white, measure again. Increase contrast and use your RGB gains to get 100 nits back or get in your delta as low as you can. So go to view, grayscale, so then we're back here. Go to 100 and click play and now your colorimeter is going to start measuring white again it's going to measure probably like 40 50 nits something like that i want you to increase contrast on your crt's osd until it starts uh, reading as 100 nits um, and then i want you to rebalance um, your red green and blue in hdfr using the gain settings on your crt so hopefully your delta E is really low and you're targeting 100 nits. It would also be a good idea to go back to the patch 30 and click play and uh, make sure that's reading um, correctly. Make sure that's uh, balanced as well. You may need to rebalance your bias settings. And then it would also be a good idea to go back to uh, near black scale and measure patch 2 again and then make sure that's just on the verge of being red okay now we're ready for display cal step 2 display cal um, part 1 open display cal and copy my exact settings make sure they are absolutely the same so we're going to open display cal and I want you to copy my exact settings. So make sure your display is selected, your colorimeter is selected. Um, for correction, I want you to select CRT. For under calibration, I want you to set these as your uh, color coordinates. So that's 0 0.3127 and uh, 0 0.3290. Make sure your tone curve is at 2.2 absolute and your calibration speed is, uh, speed is set to high. In the profiling, make sure you're on 400 patches. 
uh, under 3D LUT, you may need to enable 3D LUT. So go to Options and then click Enable 3D LUT tab. And uh, make sure you click Show Advanced Options as well. Um, under 3D LUT, make sure Create 3D LUT After Profiling is ticked. Uh, under Tone Curve, have it as 2.2 Absolute. Make sure Apply Calibration VCGT is unchecked. So make sure that's not checked. And um, make sure this is dot cube. Okay, for part two, we're going to click calibrate and profile, measure, and then let display cal generate, and then save to a location we know. So go to display cal, or also make sure before you do this, close HDFR, click no, go to 3D look, and then I want you to click this, and then click start measurement. Make sure black background is ticked. And then I want you to click start measurement and it's going to measure your white point. And then hopefully if you set your white point correctly, all these are going to be aligned and your target here is going to be set to 100 nits. And then uh, after that, I want you to click continue on to calibration and then you know just leave your room, let the colorimeter measure the colors uh, displayed on the CRT, measure the patches. Uh, hopefully you come back in 20 minutes and it's all completely measured it might take 30 35 minutes if you're unlucky okay part three um, now uncheck create 3d look after profiling and check vcgt under the 3d look tab then click generate profile so we're going to go back to display cal make sure this is checked and this is unchecked so this is going to be unchecked and then you're going to click this button and then you're going to generate another 3d look and i want you to save it to location you know Okay, part four, um, open DWM GUI and select your 3D look without VCGT, click apply. So I've already got it open, so it's just in my uh, tray. So you're going to click browse and then you're going to select it and then you're going to click apply. And then you're going to do the same, but this time you're going to uh, select the one with VCGT enabled. Um, if the one without VCGT Uncrushes your blacks, so your near black detail gets raised, then use that one. If it doesn't, and you need the one with VCGT enabled, then use that. See here? But if your black, uh, blacks do not uncrush after clicking apply, use a 3D look with VCGT. Okay, now uh, hopefully you are amazed by uh, the picture quality now, because now your blacks are much deeper. Um, and you have all your contrast back. Um, everything is at the right luminance now. Um, part five. To get this working with full screen programs, use reshade. Tutorial in description. So DWM look DUI only works in um, desktop. Just anything that isn't full screen. When it's in full screen, you can still use 3D LUTs. You can still get these benefits, but you're going to have to use reshade to apply them. Okay, and uh, the third and final step, enjoy your new display. Um, four times deeper blacks, um, your colours will be saturated properly, you're going to have better gamma, more perfect gamma. Um, your uh, dark related artifacts will be eliminated if you have any of those. Um, and your CRT will be brought significantly closer to today's colour reproduction standards. All within less than an hour. Um, feel free to use this method on um, CRTs which do not have any um, bias controls at all. They have really, like CRTs with really messed up calibrations. Just run it through Display Cal and then that will solve all the issues with the, um, with the, the CRTs calibration. You know, this here is um, one of my Shadow Mask CRTs which didn't have any uh, bias controls. And you can see the, the gamma is awful. Um, and they had a weird uh, OSD quirk where one gain option had to be, had to be set to max. So my gamma was awful, my tracking was awful, um, but with a 3D look, it was virtually perfect afterwards. So um, yeah, feel free to use this not only on um, CRTs which already have great calibration control, but on CRTs which don't have any uh, good calibration control. If you enjoy the result, consider creating a more rigorous 3D look. Um, change the calibration speed from high to medium. Change the patch size from 425 to 833. 
If you've got more time, go slow, and uh, I consider doing 2.5k patches. Really, 400 is the bare minimum to get a pretty decent 3D look, but uh, if you do enjoy the result, I strongly recommend uh, going for larger patch sizes. Okay, hopefully the results speak for themselves. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope you're happy with uh, the result. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.